<clears throat> Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick. Uh, I'm dropping in on you. Uh, do you know we're in the middle of a fundraiser? Uh, we're in the middle of a fundraiser. Uh, and although we are not getting the support I would like to see us get, I'm good. Uh, in pushing and doing what it is I have to do. Hopefully at some point in time, we will be able to motivate our people to mobilize and do what's necessary. And that's sort of why I'm on here. Uh, on a previous video, I had someone who has been extremely active and vocal uh, on black issues that has an awareness of where we are and has uh, not only done their own work, but has contributed to the work we do. So I respect their opinion. And one of the things that they stated that really got me to thinking is how frustrated they were in attempting to motivate our people to move in a way that's uh, conducive to us instead of being so easily distracted by way of entertainment and sensationalism. And I started to really look at it and it's at the heart of my frustration. It's been at the heart of my frustration for as long as I can remember. We can't stay focused on anything long enough to give it real true attention. We get angry about what happens to this person. Uh, when the last time you thought about George Floyd and that was progressive movement in the sense of justice, but it did nothing for us in the sense of progression as a people, but we took it as a symbolic victory because we got to see police officers found guilty and sentenced to time for killing a black man and doing it so boldly. And they definitely should have gotten time, but that wasn't the victory for black people. That was justice for uh, George Floyd and his family. There's still so many others that haven't gotten uh, justice. Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland, has they haven't gotten justice. Mike Brown hasn't gotten justice. Uh, their bail went off into uh, the district attorney's office there in, 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 uh, in, in Missouri and promised that on as a part of his campaign uh, that he was going to prosecute Darren Wilson for the murder of Mike Brown. Uh, no charges has ever been brought. And things in that particular uh, ge ge geographical location have gone from worse to horrible and nobody's doing anything about it. And we had some mobilization going on, but we allowed outsiders to send people who looked like us but didn't care about us in to destroy it in the names of Black Lives Matter, but it was all about the cash grab and the grift that, um, that they were coming in and disrupting something that was organic, something that I had not seen in I don't know how long where I would have to go to see something that forceful, that powerful, that unstoppable. And they sent in agitators. They sent in uh, a heavily funded organization like Black Lives Matter and usurped the movement, redirected the energy extracted the cash flow and bounced. We get taken like that a lot because we don't take time to understand how things work. See, learning how things work means listening to uh, channels like The Black Voice where it's not a lot of entertainment, it's not a lot of fanfare, it's not a whole bunch of laughter, uh, it's pure, hey, this is what's going on. This is how we deal with it. This is what they've been doing. This is the solution to it. And one thing that you're going to always find with the content and with my approach and what I do in my books, in my, in my, in my uh, research, in my programs, what you're going to always find is that I'm going to identify the problem. I'm going to identify the source, but I'm not identifying the source for the sake of complaining, for the sake of pointing figures, for the sake of saying, see, I told you. So I, I'm identifying the problem for the sake of producing and creating a solution. 
and you're gonna see so many if you go back and you look at what you've been given 2,500 um, videos just on this channel alone that doesn't count the other channels the other platforms where I've produced on my I've got a thousand articles on just one of my sites the Odyssey project I got hundreds of others on other sites that I've created I've got 26 published books all of this work I've got uh, dissertations published on the plight of black uh, Americans on uh, multi-generational transmission of trauma the uh, cognitive bias uh, uh, syndrome theory I mean just over and over and I'm not just producing if you go on the site you're going to see a blueprint 1.0 for black empowerment you're going to see a code of conduct you're going to see the solutions but, but that's not what we're looking for we don't want that we, won't, we don't want to mobilize. We don't want to get behind somebody that actually has a solution. I think we're actually addicted to being victims. We're addicted to being the people who complain. We are addicted to being the descendants of slaves and not realizing that those slaves were descendants of kings and tribal leaders and 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 and, 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 and so much more. And 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 we have relegated ourselves to the position of last place complainer. Am I saying that all of the things that we complain about aren't real? I'm saying that for the most part it is. I'm saying that there's a white racial caste system that exists. I am saying that there are biased laws that do not work in our favor while benefiting and creating advantages for others. I'm saying all of this. But what I'm saying is if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. I'm saying that we are vulnerable to the machinations and the schemes of the enemy because we do not work together to build, develop, and become what we can become because we do not protect the next generation. Our generations are not getting better. They're getting worse. Think about where we are. Think about the generation that's right behind us. Then think about these kids. Probably the most gifted in the way of thinking, but the least motivated to do anything with it. The most entitled generation of all time. They don't have a desire to go out and work and advance it because we didn't prepare them properly. We got consumed with symbolism, keeping up with the Joneses, pretending that we made it, making sure we're driving what makes us look good and successful, making sure we're wearing what makes us look good and successful without ever really truly being good, uh, good and successful without ever really truly achieving power in a way that will allow us to move in, a, in, in, in ways that create space for us, that send a message that we are now making our presence felt. We have so much that we have lost that it is unimaginable. And yet here we are again, sitting around and passing up opportunities um, to do something. And so I, I get it, B1. I get it. We're sitting here and bringing not just solutions and suggestions. I mean, we got programs. I'm working with kids. I'm taking kids that people are tossing away and turning them into real men. You would think that would, should be on the top of our priority list, building men that we can marry, marry our daughters off to. Building men that will make our neighborhood safe. You would think that would be a priority, but we're focused on partying, we're focused on having fun, and I'm not saying we shouldn't have fun. What I'm saying is this isn't the way we're gonna win. This isn't the way we're going to come out on top. There's something we are going to have to do. And that's, we're going to have to mobilize. And like uh, the commenter said before, how are we going to motivate an unmotivated people?